The Radio Link Test, or RLT, tool helps to measure and diagnose any wireless performance issues. This tool internally generates traffic between the two radios at the MAC layer, monitors the traffic, and will generate a test report. The test report would also help in analyzing the wireless link performance and other related issues such as interference, low throughput, and wireless errors. The tool is especially helpful for checking the quality of the link when installing for the first time and can also be used if any performance issues are noticed after the installation. Now right, we're going to start off going over some points. Uh, first off, this particular feature is only applicable to the A20, A25 units. This is not currently available on the 8100 or the 8200 units. So basically what that means is that uh, you could have a combination between a uh, um, 820 base station to uh, 820, 825 subscriber or a quick bridge 825 to a quick bridge 825. This will not work if you have let's just say or MP8100 or 8250 or anything like that connected to a 820, 825 subscriber. They will link up but this particular feature will not function just because the um, 8000 series is not supported at this time. This is not a replacement for other wireless performing measuring tools and should be used in conjunction with other tools such as iPerf or other commercial tools. A quick note on the internal iPerf to the Proxim Tsunami radios. Uh, you'll see about a 25 to 30% less throughput when running the same iPerf test from Ethernet to Ethernet. This is due to the internal processing power, the internal iPerf will use more CPU processes, thus it's going to uh, make the speed lower by 25 to 30 percent. It is recommended to use this tool with caution on a live network as it will generate internal traffic which may impact the network performance. So the best thing to do is either create a maintenance window or uh, just be cautious that this may disrupt your traffic. Uh, this tool can be accessed through either the web interface, the console commands, or via CLI. Uh, those commands are going to be discussed later on. And both ends of the link cannot simultaneously run this test, so uh, just pick whichever one you, you want to do first because you are be able to do a bi-directional test. Um, and once again, that's something that's going to be covered later on as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the main configuration and usage of the Radio Link Test tool. To access it, go ahead and click on Monitor, Warp Statistics, Interface 1, and then either SU or BSU Statistics. It's going to take you to our statistics page. All right, remember, you have to have a link. Now, if you don't have a link, you're not going to have this option. All right, go ahead and click on Details, and then you should see this option over here, Radio Link Test. So... Uh, process is fairly simple. To your left you have uh, three options. You have either uplink, downlink, or bidirectional. Okay, Choose whichever one you want to see. Uh, the verbose mode is uh, useful when you actually want to see the information after the test is um, finished. So very simple process. Go ahead and click start. Right, now this process is going to take uh, a few minutes or so. Remember the link is going to go down uh, during this process. All right, so make sure that there's no traffic on the link. Okay, so um, after the test is complete and once again with the uh, verbose mode on, you're going to see this report. Okay, uh, The report is actually going to be fairly simple, fairly self-explanatory. Now there are certain options here that are uh, configurable via uh, Telnet CLI. Okay, uh, you could change the uh, direction. Okay, the same way as here, but you could change the via CLI. Uh, you could change the test duration by default at 60 seconds. You could change it to whatever you want. Uh, the Ethernet MTU by default it's 1500 bytes. Once again, you could go ahead and change that to what you want, and then you have the uh, downlink and uplink rates. Now. Um, all of these we're going to go ahead and cover uh, briefly what the commands are, okay, and that's going to be later on. Now the test results, once again, they're fairly self-explanatory. We have your our uh, UDP throughput. It's going to give us our downlink stats, 
okay, our uplink stats, right? Here's our average throughput, right? Now, uh, I have to kind of remember that, especially with uh, uh, A20X radios, the A20s, uh, A25s, um, it really kind of depends on what you have. So if you have the... Uh, the A2550 radios, it's going to be 25 up, 25 down, or you can make that configurable. Uh, with the upgrade package, like the 100, it's going to be 50 up, 50 down. If you're at, uh, if you got the 150 upgrade, it's going to be 75 up, 75 down. So that's what's kind of what you're looking for. All right. Now, uh, the good thing is here, this specific radio is going to take very little to no CPU time. So what you see is kind of real time because it's using the the chipset okay uh, so what we kind of see here is gives us a quick statistic of what's going on okay uh, we have some retry failures uh, going to give us some statistics our fire errors our crc's the medium itself now the medium busy portion this is going to be fairly a good tool to know if there is interference in the link Okay, uh, along with the CRC and FIs, you have any questions, definitely contact Proxim Technical Support. More than happy to assist you. Then, of course, we have our MIMO, uh, depending on what you have, A1, A2, A3, and it'll give us our signal noise and then SNR for local and remote. Mm -hmm. uh, that is basically it. Uh, once again, if you have any questions on the use of this tool uh, or uh, if you're not receiving the performance that you are anticipating, uh, contact Proxim Technical Support. Okay, so I really want to go ahead and quickly touch up on the CLI commands. Uh, this information is located in both the user's manual and in the reference manual. The reference manual is just going to give you a little bit more info, but this is fairly, once again, also self-explanatory. Uh, the options that you can change would be uh, the test duration, uh, the report display, the packet size, um, you can do the uplink, downlink, and things like that. Um, so if you're not kind of satisfied with the, uh, with the defaults, by all means, you could go ahead and modify, but it has to be done via CLI, via Telnet. So my case here, you know, we just go ahead and do enable, and then let's just say I want to go ahead and change the, uh, the time from 60 seconds to 90 seconds. So you do uh, RLT, then space, dash T, space 90, hit enter, and then uh, it's going to take time. And now the test is going to run for 90 seconds. Once again, if you need more information, go ahead and check out the reference manual, the user's guide, or contact Proxim Technical Support. To learn more about Proxim Wireless and our solutions, please visit us at Proxim.com or follow us at Twitter at Proxim.